G'day and welcome to Aussie Vision. We are talking about the French entry Bilal Hassani with Wah. Yes. Let's talk about three things we like about this entry, Michael. First thing I love, the artist himself, Bilal. What a compelling character. Young, confident, queer, uh, Muslim. Mm. These are all talking points and you know what? It, it just works. It works so well. It makes him unique and he has X Factor about him. And also, second point that we love about this is the song itself. It matches him really well. I believe what he's actually singing mm. there, I think it matches who and who he is. And that authenticity is something you can't fake. It, it, it is difficult to write for young people. He is a young performer, but somehow the subject matter and everything just clicks together mm. nicely with this. I actually really believe it, mm. and I think he believes in the song, so it comes across really, really well. Yep. Let's talk about one other thing we like about it. I think it's the language mix here. Mm. Uh, France are always like to throw in a bit of English yep. in the last few years, and this one doesn't seem plonked in. This one mm, seems yeah. real and it was written this way. So I think it works and it flows. Yeah, Madame Monsieur, who are the composers of this, have done a really good job of mixing that French and English together really quite well and cohesively. Okay, what about some of the pitfalls on this one? Okay, the song itself, as much as we think it's authentic and matches him, it just doesn't pop. It doesn't really stand out amongst a big field of 26 in the final. And I think it can get a little bit forgotten. No, I'll agree with you. It worked in the national final. It was, it was its own little thing. There was mm. nothing like it. Uh, I think once you get to the big stage of Eurovision, I'm not mm. sure this is going to be one to compel the voters to pick up the phone. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, let's talk about something that happened in the national final as well. Really kind of bombed with the international juries. So therefore, I've got some real jury concern here. Not sure it's going to pop in the juries. They buried it completely, so why will they vote for it now in the final? Also, the vocals. Um, I He's not the strongest vocals in the world. I don't think they're bad. Um, but he just doesn't have power, and I think there's just got so many other better vocalists who will be in that 26. I'm going to disagree a little bit. They did adjust the song for him after the national final, and we saw him at Vidber. He sang it quite well, and he sang it quite comfortably. Um, you're right, there is no vocal high points that catches the eye, but at least he's not straining when he sings the song. So I don't mind the vocal, but it's not an eye catch. Yeah, look, I mean, there's a few like this. He's improved from here to here. Yeah, fair it's enough. It's not up here yet, though. That's, I guess that's still my negative about it. No, fair enough. Right, okay. What do we think it's going to do with the contest itself? Predictions, left or right hand side of the scoreboard? Sorry, France, I think you're off to the right hand side again this year. As much as I do like the song and I love the performer, I just don't think it's got enough pop factor to get to the left hand side. I'm saying middle of the right hand side. Yeah, I kind of tend to agree with you. I'm right hand side of the scoreboard as well. Maybe 15th to 20th place I'm feeling at the moment. Yeah, but it. there's still a long way to go, obviously. Totally. We'll see what they bring with staging because this could really elevate the song, fingers crossed. You never know. Okay, well, that's just a little quick um, view of the uh, song itself. We've actually done our podcast episode, which goes into way more detail. We give our rankings and also the Aussie Vision rankings as well. So listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for joining us, guys. See you later.